There are numerous companies whose products and working conditions have led to public criticism, whether tobacco and Big Pharma, food and energy titans or Big Food. In comparison to Nestle, Monsanto, Shell and Co, one of these companies, the American agricultural giant Cargill, has proven to be even worse. Even larger than the infamous Koch Industries, Cargill is the largest privately held firm in the United States. Its global footprint is extensive. Then why is it the worst company in the world? We acknowledge that this is a loaded statement and needs a lot of research. Unfortunately, a lot more corporations could compete for this questionable distinction. Welcome to the Incredible Channel, where we cure your boredom through spine-chilling investigations. Today, we will unravel many hidden policies of the Cargill company. Let's dive right in. In 2019, the advocacy group Mighty Earth released a 54-page report titled Cargill, the worst company in the world, that details the multiple wrongdoings carried out by the agricultural behemoth Cargill Incorporated. This report provides a much more thorough account of Cargill's corruption than any single opinion piece ever could, detailing child slavery, systemic discrimination, confiscation of indigenous land, deadly disease outbreaks, union busting, safety violations, price fixing of essential goods, tax evasion, irreversible environmental damage, and other examples. Cargill is undoubtedly one of the top companies because it is the largest privately held corporation in the US. How and why is this permitted to occur? How has Cargill amassed enough riches and authority throughout its 157 year existence to be allowed to engage in villainous acts on par with those shown in Disney movies? And why haven't the nearly 70 nations and areas that Cargill operates in utilized their power to stop it? As the largest intermediary for the most valuable commodity in the world, Cargill links farmers of crops and livestock to retailers, chains of restaurants and other food distributors. They have earned a record-breaking $165 billion in revenue. The Cargill Macmillan family, the fourth wealthiest in the US, owns 88% of their namesake business. Their founder, W.W. Cargill, started the family's fortune by purchasing a single grain silo in Conover, Iowa. From then on, Cargill aggressively gathered as much of the grain industry's quickly developing storage and transportation infrastructure as he could. Consequently, it becomes possible for small family farms to thrive using his company. By the turn of the 20th century, Cargill had captured the seed, fertilizer, farming equipment, packaging and food broking industries. From there, they eliminated as many of their rivals as they could to grow into the enormous profit-making monolith they are today, under which nearly the entire agricultural economy is forced to toil to fulfill its purpose of feeding the world's population. After Cargill dominated a sizable portion of the market, they started speculating on the future pricing of essential commodities by trading commodity futures. They were able to manage the supply and maximize every investment since they had such extensive insider knowledge of these businesses. Thus, they could do so at the expense of people's ability to provide for their families. Cargill has never been in the business of generating value. Instead, it has focused on extracting profit through a monopoly on essential resources. They have yet to stimulate innovation by raising the bar on the competition. Imagine all the agricultural improvements that may have occurred if a few mega conglomerates had not completely dominated agribusiness. Companies like Cargill will continue to fall short as long as people rely on them to give them access to needs like food, water, shelter and healthcare. The fundamental truth is that addressing world hunger and geometrically growing shareholder value are two competing goals, and the ruling class has no interest in ever finding a way to reconcile this conflict. The company is well established in producing and distributing cotton, oil bearing seeds and grain. Animal feed, biodiesel, a variety of food items and processed food components, including enhancers and sweeteners, are all directly produced by Cargill. They also actively participate in the financial sector on top of all this. Industry heavyweights including Nestle, McDonald's, Burger King, Walmart, Kellogg's, Unilever and Danone are among Cargill's notable clients. Mighty Earth states about Cargill, Today, one privately held company just may have more power to single-handedly destroy or protect the world's climate, water, food security, public health and human rights than any single company in history. Then what wrongdoing has Mighty Earth alleged the agricultural corporation to have committed in their report? 
the list of offences is extensive and challenging to condense. The claims include citations to official government and court records, third-party research studies and internal organisation reports. Here are a few instances. Slave and child labour on plantations. Mighty Earth cites instances in the Ivory Coast, Indonesia, Uzbekistan and Kuala Lumpur. There are rumours that Mali youngsters are abducted and sent to the Ivory Coast to work on cocoa farms. The plantation overseers made the children work up to 14 hours a day without compensation while denying them food and subjecting them to physical abuse. They would have had their feet cut off with a knife and been made to drink their urine if they were caught trying to escape. Produced for Cargill were these coca beans. There are currently legal actions planned against Cargill. Land grabbing. Cargill is accused of misappropriating land in Colombia and Kuala Lumpur. This was allegedly done in Colombia utilising a legal loophole that forbids the concentration of land ownership. According to reports, Cargill established 36 subsidiary firms to get around these restrictions and buy more than 52,000 hectares of property. Causing environmental pollution. A Cargill facility dumped 65 million gallons of acidic sewage into a river in 2004. It has consistently turned out that this frequently happens in different parts of the United States. As an illustration, a poisonous salt mixture released in a nature reserve killed plants and fish. Cargill has already been charged with violating air pollution laws. Violence against indigenous peoples. Producers and farmers frequently evict local indigenous tribes to make room for soy plants from the forest they call home. One such community was visited by Mighty Earth in Paraguay. The community members told of the plantation's owners' brutality, intimidation and harassment of them planes spraying pesticides over their heads, and children perishing from drinking contaminated water. Cargill is trying to portray itself as a custodian of sustainability. According to research by the environmental group Mighty Earth, titled Cargill, the worst company in the world, Cargill's claims of sustainability are merely empty words. When Cargill announced its support for the UN's New York Declaration on Forests in 2014, which aims to stop and reverse the loss of forests, the company garnered media attention. According to Cargill's CEO, David McLennan, the corporation will use its power to stop deforestation in all of its agricultural supply chains by 2020. The company's dedication was praised for being able to lessen global deforestation, alleviate climate change and safeguard local communities because it impacts just about every agricultural supply chain. Cargill, however, chose not to do so. In contrast, Mighty Earth's analysis shows that Cargill is accountable for clearing significant rainforest areas in Brazil and Bolivia for soy farming through funding overexploitation, the construction of roads and silos, and the exportation of soy. Additionally, Cargill has been charged with purchasing coca beans, cultivated in Ghana and the Ivory Coast using unlawful logging practices in national parks and protected forests. Inquiries for comment from Grist went unanswered by Cargill, but the founder of the Earthworm Foundation, Scott Poynton, believes he reasonably understands the situation. When Cargill decided to make its 2014 pledge, his organisation, then known as the Forest Trust, closely collaborated with the business. Poynton wasn't involved in those negotiations, but has witnessed clashes over deforestation promises in Southeast Asia. When the Indonesian government threatened the palm oil multinationals that were creating their own laws to control land usage to stop deforestation, Poynton witnessed businesses scramble. The government said, let's be bloody clear, this is our country and we make the rules around here. So if you guys aren't going to play by our game, then you can all bugger off, Poynton paraphrased. Yes, he's Australian. I guarantee that such discussions have been had, in probably quite unsavoury terms, between Cargill Brazil and the government of Brazil. Foreign businesses like Cargill are taking a significant risk by attempting to influence Brazil's land use laws at a time when Jair Bolsonaro, the country's incoming president, advocates expanding the use of forest land. Intriguingly, when Cargill informed Brazilian soy farmers on June 24th that it opposed a ban on soy development in the Corrado, they didn't exactly respond with thanks. In response, several farmer organisations wrote to Cargill, stating that they had already taken significant steps to conserve their natural areas without assistance, and that they meant to plough the land to which they were entitled. There is evidence that proves Cargill products are not to be trusted. 
Many people have become ill or died after consuming tainted Cargill meat. Thousands of child labourers cultivate the coca that Cargill sells for the world's chocolate and don't get the proper wages. Midwesterners who drink water that Cargill has contaminated but can't raise their voices. Not to forget the indigenous people uprooted by extensive deforestation to make way for Cargill's animal feed. Many regular consumers have had to pay more to put food on the table due to Cargill's financial misdeeds. They have all felt their interactions with Cargill have negatively impacted their quality of life. According to CBC News, the Supreme Court sided with food giants Nestle and Cargill on Thursday. It dismissed a complaint alleging that they knew they were purchasing coca beans from African farms that employed child slave labour. The appeals court erroneously allowed the case against the food firms to proceed, and the justices concluded 8-1. to one. Six Mali adults who claimed that they were kidnapped as youngsters and forced to work on cocoa estates in the neighbouring Ivory Coast filed a lawsuit against the firms. Before the US Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit reopened the case, it had already been prematurely dismissed twice. The administration of then-President Donald Trump supported Nestle and Cargill when the issue was contested in December. The Malian people had claimed that the American division of Swiss-based Nestle and Minneapolis-based Cargill aided and abetted their enslavement as children by, among other things, purchasing coca beans from farms that employed child labour. The organisation filed a lawsuit to represent itself. They claimed thousands of other former child slaves in a class action lawsuit. Throughout the proceedings, Nestle and Cargill have insisted that they did nothing wrong and that they took actions to stop child enslavement. Following the verdict, Nestle and Cargill reaffirmed their commitment to fighting child labour in the coca business in remarks. The Alien Tort Statute, passed by the First Congress in 1789 and allows foreign nationals to file lawsuits in American courts for human rights violations, is at issue in this case. Thomas, however, argued that this case wasn't appropriate before American courts. We can clearly see that Cargill's vast list of commitments is nothing more than a publicity stunt designed to boost its reputation while the company profits handsomely from environmental destruction and human rights abuses. The voluntary actions taken by Cargill won't stop future wrongdoing. It's time to introduce binding regulations to adequately address these urgent issues after decades of firms trying to self-regulate. According to the NGO Mighty Earth, Cargill's business partners and customers should switch to more environmentally friendly businesses which also urges individuals and consumer product firms to hold them publicly accountable and pressure them to make necessary changes. Subscribe to the channel as a sacrifice to the gods of the algorithm. Thanks for watching.